it's Doris with Aldi Books, and I am here with my 2018 bookish plans. I'm very excited about these. I joined BookTube last year around this time, and all the goals videos were so much fun for me to watch. I'm a goal-oriented person, so yeah, really, really enjoyed those. And I made my list, and I made my own goals video, and I was very happy with it. I've accomplished most of those goals, or I will. There are a couple that I have found just simply don't interest me, and I will talk about those in another video. But this year, I just, I feel like I figured it out. I, f I feel like I've, I've found my bookish booktube groove, and I'm pumped. So, let me go ahead and tell you about it. Yes, number one, uh, this one is the same. As last year, and the year before that, and the year before that, and the year before that. Um, it's not really a goal, to be quite honest, anymore. It was, and it played a key role in getting me back into reading. Um, but it's just, right now, not really, it's moot. Um, and that is the numbers game. I set my Goodreads goal at 52 books. And this is the, this will be my fifth year. And I just think that's a perfect number. Um, like I said, when I first set that number, I guess it was four years ago. I, I've accomplished it for four years now. This, yeah. Um, I did have to scramble a little bit in December to finish it for a couple years. And then, you know, last year when I joined BookTube, I nailed it with 60. It's pretty exciting. Um, and this year, I've just blown it out of the water. Um, but that wasn't intentional for me to read that many books. I'll tell you eventually how many that was um, in another video. But it was enjoyable. I just have enjoyed reading and I want to keep it that way. And I don't want this really bizarre number hanging over my head. So 52 is what I feel like is a good intellectual level for me personally and I'm sticking with it and anything I read is just bonus fun. So yeah, numbers. Um, the next one is the one I'm super excited about. So I felt like my goals last year were a bunch of little nitpicky bullet point list things and I totally wanted to get away from that. I just wanted something very streamlined and easy to do. And like I said, I'm a goal oriented person. So if I set myself too many goals, it can get uncomfortable because I don't look at them and um, see them as, you know, things that I might want to accomplish. I look at them and see them as things that I have to accomplish. Um, and I pretty much do. So yeah. So I have to be careful. <laughs> With myself and not do that so I've come up with a system to instead of looking at it as a year I've just made a year-long set of monthly plans for myself they're so so cool let me show you uh, this is my little goals page in my bullet journal so we'll talk about all these things eventually today but um, my monthly bits yeah let me swing around to the desktop and get into those because they're, they're cool. So here we go. I have just in my bullet journal laid out a half page per month. I've got 12 months here and I have chosen one or two major topics for the month to focus on. And I will type these below in case anyone's interested in, um, thinking about them a little more deeply, <laughs> but yeah, so those are in yellow here. So in January, I've got um, the Middle East, and that's mainly books that I've collected that focus on um, either the Jewish or the Palestinian side of the Middle East, and mostly that issue, Jewish, Palestinian issue, and I've just been collecting them all through um, this past year, and I just want to get to them, so I decided to make January that month because it was really the only open month once I got everything listed. February is Black History Month here in the States, and I'd like to focus on that. Um, March is my birthday, and 
Bailey's long list is announced, and I absolutely got along famously with the Bailey's Women's Prize last year, so I fully intend to read a lot of that this coming year as well. Um, then in April is Tom Topple, and the Bailey shortlist is announced that month. So I've not put a bunch of readathons in these major goals because I love to do readathons, but I don't, you know. Again, I don't want to make myself focus on them if I don't want to. So as they come up and I want to do them, that's great. But I just don't want to make myself a bunch of lists of things I want to do all year because it gets stifling for me. But Tom Topple is one I do want to make sure and participate in, even if it's just reading one tome, because I want to remember to read um, my big books, especially ones that sit around for a while. So... That will just remind me to focus on those three times a year because there are three tone topples through the course of the year. And then the Bailey's reading will be a lot of May as well. And then Bailey's is announced early June. But then June and July, I'm off school. So those will be my 30 books in 30 days challenges for sure I might do it again if other people want to do it different times of the month like Angie's doing it in December and I'll, I'm always game I'm like sure why not because you know it even if I don't read 30 books it motivates me to read 15 or 20 and it's you know I like the camaraderie so yeah but I'm definitely going to try for 30 these two months and another fun idea I've come up with I don't know if anybody's ever done it but I haven't seen it thus far but um, I'm going to do Vlogmas in July <laughs> because I know I've been frustrated about the lighting in December for Vlogmas. It's difficult when you're working and you can't be around for good lighting and you don't feel like dabbling in technology. So yeah, I think this will be super fun. Vlogmas in July. And then um, August is back to school for me and I had a lot of fun making a back to school TBR last year. So I want to do that again, maybe make a bigger deal of it. And then Tom Topple. And September, we have Hispanic Heritage Month. And I feel like this one got away from me last year because I didn't, it's not as um, in my ingrained in my mind when it is. So putting it down on the calendar will keep me focused. And then the National Book Award um, long list is announced mid-September. And that's another book award that really... Um, set well with me, especially the nonfiction list. So, and then um, October is the other, well, there's a couple more months of readathons, but Victober and Speakathon were two that I really, really, really enjoy and want to remember to do. Um, and then the National Book Award long shortlist is here, nonfiction November. Obviously, such a fabulous month. And the National Book Award is announced. And then in December, we just have Christmas and Vlogmas. So, you know, catch up month. So I'm super excited about this plan because it keeps me focused and varied and cycling through things. But it's not um, anything hanging over my head, if that makes sense. So then a couple of other goals that I want to look into are, I did a couple of videos this year. One of them was authors that I've read three or more of their books that I made videos of. And then book pairings or books that really sat well together. Um, and I, I want to do more of those videos. And obviously for both of those, I have to read books in order to make the videos. And then I have some other, besides my Middle East collection, I have, um, some other random collections that I've been wanting to make videos of and I need to finish reading to do that. And then um, there are a few classics that I've wanted to read. Like I mentioned earlier, I bought the first two Trollops. I want to see if I like him. Um, I want to buy those pretty little Jane Austen books, but only one at a time as I read them. I've got... Um, a set of three Jane Faulkner's. I've really been wanting to reread The Sound and the Fury because that's one of my all-time favorites and I just want to reread it again for that experience that I had the first time. It was amazing. Um, and then read a couple of other Faulkner's just, you know, to see what else he's done. And 
I have Dickens too. I forgot to write it on here, but I have a couple of Dickens that I want to check out, rereads as well, um, and see what I think of him as an adult. And then um, fantasy, that's not a classic, but um, I find I've got, I don't want to buy a bunch of fantasy series and not read them. I've got two right now and there's another one I want to buy. So I kind of want to get, remember to get those series started during the year so I can finish them. So yeah, so let's talk about those. I have those incorporated into my calendar as well. So I mostly did them these first four months. So the Trollop and the Steinbeck, that's another one. I have, um, I said last year that I wanted to read all of Steinbeck's work and I don't think I'm going to get that done in one year. I don't want to push myself, but I do want to start working on that. So I have written Trollope and Steinbeck and the Six of Crows, and those all have stars. Here's the Austin, here's the Faulkner. So I've kind of pacing myself out a little bit with those. And then the stars are to remind me that once I do actually read one, I need to then flip forward and find another place to read the next one just to keep me going with that goal. And then the pink ones are the videos. So the three authors video and the book pairing video. So once I film those, then I need to set another challenge later in the year because these are something that I think I would want to do maybe three times a year. So I need to pick another date to shoot for for the next one. And then like the Amy Tan here, I have one more book I want to read to then talk about my Amy Tan collection. So yeah, I'm very excited about this. I think it's going to be super fun and simple and awesome. And then over on this side, I also, I don't want to, you know, curtail my book buying habit, um, but I do want to try to um, organize it a little, if that makes sense. So knowing what my focus is for the month, I've started writing books that I'm interested in purchasing that go along with the theme or what have you. Um, so for the Middle East months, I have been wanting salt houses and I've been wanting... Um, a Horse Walks Into a Bar. I think those will fit well. And then the Ellie Weisel trilogy of Night and Dawn and Day. I've read the first two, but not the third. So I think I want to read that. And then Black History Month. I've got a huge list going, so I'm going to have to be selective there probably. So yeah, that's what I've got planned. And I can just add to both of these lists throughout the year and keep up. And then down here, I don't, I'm not interested in buying many books like pre-order ahead of time or as they come out I just am more prone to when people start talking about them than I get interested in them but there are a couple that I've noticed that I want so I'm putting those at the bottom of the month to remind myself with that so then um the other one I mentioned my goal of reading through Steinbeck so I have made here he is <laughs> I've made this page. I'm going to list all of his works. I think there were 33. And then I will check off here as I know that I own them. And over here as I know that I've read them. So that's simple. And like I said, this isn't like a one year goal. Because there's 33 and I think I've only read 6 or 8. Um, and then my nonfiction author's goal. This one I'm super pumped about as well. During nonfiction November, I realized, I mean, I, I love nonfiction, but I realized that I don't recognize the names of nonfiction authors the way I do fiction authors. So fiction seems to me like it's driven by the author's name. And, you know, you find an author you like and you buy books from that author. But fiction is more topical. So you read things that catch topics that catch your interest, but you don't necessarily know if the author's one whose style you like. So I've decided that as I read nonfiction, I'm going to investigate that author and see if there are any other, you know, the really good ones. I'm going to investigate and see if there are any other books that are of interest to me that he or she has written. 
and keep up with them this way so that I can become more familiar with nonfiction authors by their author name, not their works, if you know, I'm rambling now. So yeah, um, I think I've explained this fairly well. And like I said, I will, these main um, monthly categories, I will list those in the notes section below so that you can look through them kind of all together. And now I'm going to swing back around and say goodbye to you. That's it. I'm very excited about these goals. The only other one that I have to mention is that um, I want to order real adult bookcases for my living room this year at some point, but I want to paint the living room first. I need to paint my whole house because these are not the colors that I would choose. They're the colors that were here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to paint my house this year, but once I do that, I want to get some real bookcases, which will be awesome because I'm super excited as I've read so many books this year and as I bring more into the house, I want to be able to organize them the way that I like to organize things um, because part of the fun for me is organizing. I'm, I'm very into that sort of thing, so I want to group them the way I see them in my mind. So yeah, those are my goals. And let me know if you have any questions or, um, yeah, I'm watching all the goal videos. I just thrive on them. So fun time of year for me and looking forward to January as well. Thanks for watching and I hope your end of the year is going swell. I will see you soon. Bye.